Hello, Lothar here. Uh, this is a part two of a series of videos on what I'll be doing uh, in maybe January, a couple of months before uh, the start of the through hike. So I'm now going to move on to some of the things you might want to consider on in the way of courses or uh, sort of uh, learning process. So I'm, I'm going less less away from the gear now. It's more about uh, navigation. This is the one I'm going to focus on. Now, I grew up. Um, uh, go through the scout process, the adventure scout process. I then did orienteering competitions. I did team competitions. I did mountaineering, uh, not serious mountaineering, but enough that um, I needed to go on courses to learn how to do certain things and look after myself and uh, not endanger others. Now, um, all through that process, uh, the ability to navigate is uh, basically came, became second nature to me because I I just love the, the the challenge of using a compass, trying to walk on a bearing, trying to accurately navigate through mist and snow. Um, and as I said, I did it competitively, and uh, you you always get better and better at it. Um, now, if you've never done that before, uh, if you've never used uh, you know maybe a compass like this or a, a thumb compass, which your orienteering uses. Uh, or a, maybe a button compass like something like this which is like just a simple button compass um, to orientate yourself um, it's a good skill to have it's a good skill to have um, just in general when you're hiking uh, on the PCT um, are you going to do any serious navigation it's very unlikely because the trail is very well marked there are maps like this you can buy booklets like this um, which give you the general features so as you're hiking along you can um, maybe orientate north you can probably use a compass uh, uh, you can lay that over the map and then you can use the, the north needle to line the north line north facing lines on the map you're basically setting the map as that's what it's called you're setting it to the environment you're in and therefore you can then match oh there's a there's a hill on the on the map, map there and it should be over to my right hush my right hand shoulder um it's a good skill to have um and when you're navigating you actually start paying more attention to your environment you start paying more attention to your, the features you walk past um so First thing in the morning, whenever I'm uh, doing a next section on my through hike, I'd look at the map. Now, in this, in my particular case, I use gut hooks. Now, um, from that, I would look at right: Am I generally going uphill in the morning or downhill? Um, have I got one river crossing or two river crossings? Uh, is there injunctions coming up? Um, should there be massive? Is there a pass specifically coming? I'd be looking for features as I go along, uh, and I'd be regularly turning behind and then looking behind me to see have the features are the features there I'd expect. Um, I'd be looking, right, where's the, I'd expect always as I'm heading north the sun to be behind me. Now, um, in certain places on the trail, on like Mount Shasta, you kind of go west and then north and then east again and then north again. You do a big sort of uh, notch out on the trail. Um, so the, the position of the sun changes. So again, it's just, whilst because I'm so used to navigating, um, uh, you just do that naturally. Uh, and in general, you, um, I mean, I saved me a couple of times because there was one junction there where I just wasn't paying attention to the map. Um, I'd already checked that I was should be going up um, and then uh, in the morning and then pretty much 90% of the time I'd be going downhill. Now it just happened that I was talking to one of the guys I was hiking with and we'd say oh where do we want to camp and we, we said a certain particular place and I think it was Duck Duck Lake Outlet. Um, now it just so happened just before Duck Lake Outlet there's a junction to Duck Lake. Now as I saw the sign I just naturally said oh Duck Lake I just, just turned and I started going uphill. And within about two or three minutes, I could see that I was going to be uphill quite a lot. And he said, no, this is my, everything in my instinct told me that no, this is wrong. I knew this was wrong from the map, uh, the sort of uh, ref review I went through in the morning. So I just stopped and just pulled up gut hooks and double check rolls. And lo and behold, I'd obviously turned the wrong junction. So I then descended back down. And um, yeah, I didn't have to spend maybe two or three, four, four, four miles going, going uphill before I realized I screwed up. Um, so again, it just comes from just familiarization of using maps, familiarization of playing with the environment and matching your expectations to the environment as you hike through it. Now, when I was on trail, I used gut hooks quite a lot. Um, it, uh, you can zoom in, you can have high resolution. Now, should you carry paper maps? Now, this is uh, something where everyone would recommend, everyone will say, yes, you should carry paper maps. Now, the reason is that if your electronics fails, and that's a fair comment, now, the problem I have with these particular maps is that um, for serious navigation, uh, for, for basically if you're if you're truly lost in mist, uh, you, you're looking at near uh, basic uh, uh, features. 
that are near to you. And that's what you're trying to navigate through mist and stuff. These aren't very good because the simple resolutions in here, the half mile maps, which were the predecessor, were actually better because they had a higher resolution. And it's a shame they can't do that, but I do understand. So at the moment, these are the compromise you have to live with. These are the best you can get, um, unless you're going to invest in a full set of high resolution maps, which is uh, very, very expensive um, and you have to carry them. So this is the best you can get uh, in terms of um, but or serious orienteering or navigation. I'm not a fan, but anyway, um, should you, you carry one of these? Um, now again, this uh, is nice if you are if you know how to use it, if you know how to take a bearing, if you know how to walk on a bearing, if you know how to lay it over a map, match it to features and take bearings. That is why I would say, if you get a chance, do a navigation course. It, it's, I think like RE I saw it, 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 it actually just opens your eyes to the environment a bit more. And you can actually play with it whilst you're going, you're going along. Now, um, I mean, this, this has an inclinometer. I mean, I, I'd use that in serious navigation, but on BCT, you don't, you don't need this kind of thing. Um, so if you are using, say, gut hooks, um, maybe with a, a, a mini in reach, which doesn't have separate maps, then I would suggest, yes, you do carry paper maps <coughs> um, as a backup. Um, just so if, you, if you lose one of your electronic systems. Now, I personally took a slightly different route in the fact that because I had gut hooks, I also had the old style um, uh, Garmin inReach, which has a full independent map system. I downloaded the PCT map. This is a full independent navigation system without any need to pair with the phone. And I got a full map display as well. So I've actually got two redundant map electronic systems. I store them separately. Um, so the chances of both of them failing electronically, yeah, you could say that, but that's pretty extreme. Um, so I didn't carry paper maps as a result of the fact that I had two fully independent mapping systems. Now, the other thing I do carry, um, and I've carried these since I ever started hiking because it was drummed into me, and so this is before the idea of GPS systems and um, uh, gut hooks and things like that, um, is that I was always taught to carry one of these. Because if you slip off trail, there's a whistle, if you're wondering what it is. Um, because if you slip off trail, normally, if you want to get attention somewhere, you're probably only five meters away or 10 meters away from them. It's usually the distances are very very short, but you may be maybe out of sight. So this is your audible warning uh, to let people know you need help. Uh, now, another thing we used, uh, again, probably when I was about 18 to 20, we started playing when we were in the mountains. We started playing with little mirrors, like these little signaling mirrors. Now, these actually, actually work. Obviously, you need sunshine. So if you need to get the attention of a rescue helicopter, so um, I did a hike up to, um, we we're going up to one of the last huts on Mont Blanc, um, and you could see how, um, and there was actually, there were re various rescue helicopters uh, uh, doing patrols, um, and you could see that if you needed to get assistance, and this was before the time of inReach and um, you know, SOS alert systems like that, um, how this these kind of uh, signaling mirrors um, to be used. Now I actually use this on the PCT as my shaving mirror and also my medical mirror so if I needed you know, to check if there's something in my eye. And this weighs nothing but it's a beautiful signaling mirror. And the other thing I carried, so I didn't carry on the PCT this compass, I actually carried a button compass. So again if I, I use this because if I got generally orient, disorientated in snow or mist, uh, sorry mist and a little cloud, this basically gave me a basically a steadying uh, guideline so I'm, I'm heading in roughly the right direction and I would probably use gut hooks or all my other GPS system to um, get me to um, back to the trail if I somehow sort of came off trail or I got lost. So um, you have a choice of um, different types of uh, navigation equipment you obviously have to, uh, different people have different skill levels if you've not done it before if you've not set them what i would call set a map which is whereby you lay the camp com a compass onto a map and orientate it to the surroundings if you've not learned how to set a bearing or walk on a bearing i would say if you've got time it's a good skill to have is it essential for the pct no it's not it's not essential uh, but having mapping skills and basic map skills um, and navigation skills for something like the pct it's a nice backup to have but if all goes well, you you won't need it, but it's it's, it's for that period where something crazy goes wrong uh, and you get you know, completely disorientated. You then have to um, find yourself navigating. Maybe you, you can't find the trail. You're now looking at matching features. There's a feature over there and your feature over there, and you're matching it to the map, and then trying to figure out where you are if you if, if, if all your GPS systems are down. Um, good skill to have. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Um, uh, the next one I'm going to do is snow skills. Uh, so I'll just bear with me. I will uh, see you in the next video.